test one, two, three, test. Okay. Uh, good day, everyone. Um, today I'm going to be recording a guide for how to do Zion Deep Caves on flight. Uh, now, this is quite an advanced topic within Cogmind. So, um, first of all, spoiler warning uh, for people that don't know what or where or uh, Zion is, uh, don't watch this. Uh, Spoilers, obviously. This is not for complete beginners. Um, and then, if you don't know what uh, ZDC or Zion Deep Caves is, I recommend maybe not watching this if you want to find out on your by yourself uh, what it is, how it works. If you're already more experienced, this guide is maybe useful uh, for people that want to learn how to do Zion Deep Caves on flight. Um, now. Um, just as a small remark, this run, the setup for this, uh, I largely did it in my previous video, which was the guide to killing exiles. And all I did afterwards was just head towards Zion. Um, so if you want to see where I got all this stuff, you can see that in the other video. Um, with that out of the way, let's get right into it. Uh, so one question you might want to ask yourself is, why would I want to do Zion deep caves on flight? Pimsky, what the hell is wrong with you? Uh, to which my answer would be, well, actually, um, what oh, is this nice? We get the codes. It doesn't really matter because we have another way in. I'll talk about that in a second. Um, so, um, why would you want to do this? Uh, the reason for doing ZDC, which is a pretty dangerous combat area on flight, is because of a specific item that gets dropped by an enemy there. Uh, namely, uh, Metafield, uh, I believe it's called the Zion Metafield Generator from Z Imprinter, which doubles your movement speed on flight. Uh, we got the AA event, that's very nice. That's also one of the events we're looking for, so this is a good start. Uh, this guy is useless. Um, yeah, so basically, um, if we can get that item. Uh, and make it out of CDC alive and also get maybe some other stuff. Uh, that's very nice. And that and gives us pretty much the single most powerful item on flight builds, which is the goal here. And if you can learn to reliably pull this off, uh, it will completely change your experience on flight builds from, from what I've experienced anyway, as far as I can uh, say. What's this? Uh, the matter thing, okay. Uh, there's one other event, so the reason I start this uh, guide off um, uh, in this area rather than in CDC already um, is so I can talk a bit about what we do want to do here. Um, there's a couple of events that are potentially uh, relevant. There's the phasing AFG, which uh, allows you to pull items. Um, that's useful for getting potentially the exiles item uh, that can be found in CDC. Uh, so if we get that, I can demonstrate that as well. Let's see. There's no EM launchers here, so I'm not interested, I think. You already have a heavy missile launcher. Maybe this one is damaged now. Okay. Um, oops. Um, so in general, um, while we're doing the prep, I'm going to try and multitask and also talk about uh, the ideas behind what I'm doing. Um, but I'm bad at multitasking, so please bear with me. Um, so what do you need in order to do uh, CDC on flight? In my personal experience, oh, phasing saber is very good. More mass, more rating, more integrity, heat, lots more damage. Though. I'll take it, I think. I'll take one. Um, mm -hmm. I think this is all right. Um, right, so what do you need in order to do this? In my experience, there's three things that are very important when doing ZDC on flight. Uh, number one is allies. Uh, the main reason you want allies is to pull aggro for you, so you don't take as much damage. Number two is backup flight parts, uh, specifically um, backup uh, thrusters and backup engines. 
ideally you would like to have a full set of backups. In this case I don't, I have an extra engine, but I don't have as many flight units as I would like to have, and already these are a little bit damaged. So this is not ideal in terms of uh, backups. And the third one is out of depth weapons. Um, and generally, if you have two out of three of those, you can be fairly confident that if you play well, you'll be able to take on the uh, CDC on flight. So any two uh, of those three will do. So you have the allies, the backup stuff, and uh, the out-of-depth weapons. And the out-of-depth weapons specifically, um, that takes a little bit of, of explaining because it's not super straightforward. So what sort of stuff are you looking for? Uh, one thing you might be looking for is melee weapons, because they're just extremely good for, uh, for killing all sorts of NPCs. Uh, the imprinter doesn't have any resistance against uh, melee, so that's good. They deal extremely uh, large, reliable, single-target damage uh, without needing a lot of backup utilities. They, they're very good by themselves already. Um, and also, if you get uh, good melee weapons, for example... Um, some sort of spear or something, piercing weapon to hit core, you damage the items less. Uh, you can do sneak attacks with them. So melee uh, weapons are just generally very good. Um, otherwise, you might want to go for exile uh, stash weapons. Um, there's a couple of those, for example, the AWSs, uh, like this one, that are extremely good. Um, this doesn't have positive salvage, though. Um, like I said, since we're doing this for the for the item, the meta field uh, generator, um, not only do we want to kill the imprinter, but we also want to get to I the items. Uh, so other stuff that's very useful is positive salvage. For example, bronze Borgons, which are like these are are super good for this because uh, they play two roles at once. First of all, they're just very good at killing imprinter, but secondly, they give the plus salvage to also get the drops. Uh, alternatively, you could do something like combine a plasma cutter, which has high salvage, with uh, killing with other weapons like melee or other exile stash weapons. Yeah, and um, so in terms of weapons, I named melee, I named exile stash weapons. Another one you can do is if you kill a Z hero, they have out of depth weapons, so you can get those. Um, yeah, I think those are the most important ones. Uh, we also got allies, so that's good. That's another uh, thing on the list that we wanted. Allies generally... Um, ooh, this is nice. Ooh, this is really nice. Okay, uh, we got... Uh, <laughs> we got Mecha Range, so... That's amazing, actually. Uh, wait, let me... Just do this correctly. Do I have anything that's more damaged? No, no. So the neutralizer I don't need to repair. It's fine, yeah, okay. <laughs> there we go. Awesome. Um, yeah. So we're fairly well prepared. Uh, we got lucky with this Scion, uh, which in a sense is unlucky because I wanted to show that this can be done reliably. Um, and if we get lucky, it's not as good of an example in general. Uh, ooh, heavy pick. Oh, maybe I should have looked... Okay, I made a mistake. I should have looked around for items first before healing because I might have wanted to repair this, for example. This is a fairly good melee weapon because it uh, pierces uh, all the way to core. Uh, I think I'm going to use four guns, though. Because I want that salvage. Right. Uh, and in terms of consistency, so I do this strategy uh, recently pretty much every time I play Flight, I go ZDC. Um, almost always I at least get out with the intact build. And very often I also get meta fuel. Like, I'm using these quantifiers here almost always, very often. I haven't actually done the maps, I haven't looked at how many runs and how many attempts I've uh, done and actually succeeded. Uh, but this is, I, I can at least assure you that if you play uh, carefully and optimally, 
as much as possible, this is a very, very reliable strategy. So this is way more reliable than, for example, trying to kill exiles. And trying to kill exiles is already, uh, as I demonstrated in the last video, something you can do at least semi-reliably. Of course, the difference here being that um, if you have to reset at this point in the game, it's a bit more annoying. Right, so what you can do, um, if you have a decent melee weapon um, with like a high maximum damage and you get the, the melee uh, modifier, the momentum bonus from having fast propulsion and moving uh, three tiles in a row in the same direction, as you can see here. Uh, then you can dig down here through the reinforced wall, so like a reinforced barrier. You dig through these machines over there and you can reach the exit. Right now we got the code, so I'm not going to bother. I'm um, just going to fill in the codes here. But that's generally how you get in. Uh, and on flight, that's super easy and reliable. So you don't need to worry about uh, like other ways to potentially get in. This, The melee way uh, is always easy and it works. You can do that on pretty much any one. Right. Um, do I have every, everything I need? I think I do. Just gonna wait for my allies to get over here. Yes, is that everyone? To the area? Okay. Oh, I uh, almost forgot, but I do want to summon these guys. So I got A8, I got the code, that means we can grab some allies here. Um, I think it's usually worth using the code for these. Now these guys have pretty bad salvage, but they're just very strong tanks and very strong damage dealers, so they're worth keeping around. Some of the allies you get aren't as good. Let's see, this one has zero, the melee guys have zero, I believe. This one could um, damage with imp uh, because impact weapons ignore coverage, this one could damage the meta field, but I'm not too worried about it. This one, I though, I think is massive negative salvage and very ineffective. Um, so what we're gonna do? Uh, wait, I'm gonna do this in such a way that I don't waste any matter. Hopefully. Um, Maybe you can kill those guys in Zion already. I'll for I forget if that aggroes the Zionites. Well, what I can do for certain is just go in here, walk up to this guy. Uh, yes, there we go. And I actually chopped off his weapon, so that's even more perfect because then he can still be used as a mid shield. Alright, um, I'm gonna put on the Borg guns. Now, um, yeah, and in general, there's different ways you can do this in terms of propulsion and um, uh, support. So, right now, it just sort of works out, but generally, you want to probably de equip your storage and leave the stuff you don't directly need. I'm gonna that in a bit as well. Jeez. Ah. Oh, uh, uncomfortable situation. Uh, let's just find out. There should be another enemy here. No? Okay. Usually they come in threes. Ah, there he is. So I want to deal with these guys first, so I don't have to bother with them during the imprinter fight. Right. Now I. Don't have to worry about triggering imprinter yet, since that only happens once I actually get close to the machine. Right. And now I want to do some inventory management. So we're running a very large energy deficit. Also, 
this is a pretty important part for the build. So if I can somehow de-equip it and still not be overweight, uh, that'd be preferable. Don't need this. Don't need this. Don't need this. Uh, don't need both melee weapons, so I can de-equip this. Probably need this. I have the battery. Wait, no, if I turn this off. I'm just doing uh the map series is minus five, this is minus eight. Also I already have some extra targeting equipped because I knew I was gonna use these. So if you have a hacking build, you want to temporarily phase out of that build and into something slightly different, maybe, if you're going to Zion. Um, I like to have my backups in inventory and um, backup weapons as well. So I might want to switch to AWS at some point. Um, though, these are not going to break super easily. So maybe I can just not do that. I'm trying to see if I can de-equip this. Like if I just stick with these guns, I can do something like this. Oh, it's the wrong button. Um, right, let's see. So if we do this, seven. so we can switch engines and still not be overweight. If we lose an improved cesium ion thruster, we can swap. And we have that extra dodge. Yes, okay, this should be perfect. Then I wanna, so I did my inventory management. I put all the stuff I don't directly need to the side. You can put this wherever. Um, if you're planning to use EM explosive weapons, which are sort of okay against uh, these guys, then you want to be careful about where you place these. Don't put them anywhere where you might potentially fire. Right now I'm not planning to use those, uh, so it's probably fine. Uh, yeah, I'm not expecting any engine explosions or whatever either, so should be okay. These guys, I want to place them close to this room, because I want to fight the imprinter somewhere around here. And I want to place them in a spot where the imprinter doesn't immediately spot them. Something like this. Then I'm just quickly going to run over here. Yes. Okay. Activate the alarm. Move back quickly. Now one thing you can consider doing is uh, when you're using a melee weapon to try and maneuver in such a way that you get a sneak attack on the imprinter. So you, what you want to do then is she comes around the corner and she doesn't see you yet. And then she fires her gun. Uh, because if you try to move on to her after a movement, she's very quick. So she gets a turn right away and she spots you. If she shoots first though, um, her turn gets delayed by however time, uh, long her volley takes, which is actually quite long. And then you have that amount of time to move one, two, three, four tiles or whatever next to her and make a sneak attack. And that I think automatically crits or something. And well, at least it deals ma uh, massive damage. And I've had runs where, with just a regular melee weapon using that strategy with a single ally. I just one hit killed her and immediately got out of her stuff. So if you're in a difficult situation or something, that's something you can try. Uh, bronze board guns are probably better here, I think. It's a bit more reliable, maybe. So I wanted to, I want to fight her around here. So I'm going to move. The reason I'm moving and not waiting is because I have more precise control over the timing, so I'm not wasting any time units. Okay, she spotted me. Um, then we're turning this on and firing.
And as you can see, if you do this sort of general setup, the idea is that you burst down the imprinter super quickly before even their allies can arrive. Sometimes that doesn't work, but a lot of the time it does. Right. Um, now I can be greedy or I can be less greedy. Um, the, my allies will already win this, so I don't have to take any more damage. I can move away if I want, but I have enough backup parts that I don't mind staying here a little bit longer, taking one or two more shots for that extra salvage, so I'm going to do that. There we go. Um, I might not have gotten enough salvage. Wait. What is every actor? Yeah, okay, we didn't get the item. So this is what you're afraid of, what could happen. Uh, what probably the issue is, is that these enhanced grunts hit them more often than I'd like. And they have uh, minus three salvage every time they hit. So that's a bit unfortunate. Um, there's not, sm and not much we can do about that. So uh, yeah, this does happen. Usually it works, but and what we could have considered is uh, not bringing along these guys. So maybe that would have been better in this case because we already had some other allies. Sure, maybe enough. I'm not gonna fight these. Uh, wait, is that? Oh, we did get it. Okay, it was around the corner. <laughs> Never mind. Okay, that's a lot better for the purposes of the guide as well. I'm not making as much of a fool out of myself. But yeah, like I said, it's not. 100% consistent to get the drop. But as you can see, with this setup, it's almost trivial to take her down without taking too much damage. We took some damage on these, but... I, I don't mind taking damage on the guns because um, they're sort of just a tool to get this item. For this particular build, I'm not planning to use them beyond the uh, PVC for a while. Yeah, but if you get the prototype item 3 mass, that's what you're looking for. Uh, I actually want these guys to kill my allies for the next part. So, uh, yeah, if you're only interested in the actual uh, killing the imprinter, this is, uh, I guess, where the video would end. Uh, you can go watch something else. If you're interested in how to do the rest of uh, CDC, I'm also going to be showing that. There we go. Very nice. Good job, guys. Um... I'll just identify this. Cyan Meta Field Generator. Okay, and it's very undamaged. Um, doubles core hover flight speed applied before considering any overweight penalties. So we're overweight right now, but yeah, this thing is amazing. Um, how you want to use this on flight builds is also interesting, but I'm not sure if I should go into super a lot of detail on that. What I would recommend is uh, saving it in inventory until you have a build that can actually run it in a decent way. Um, let me see. I'll take that damage down. So now I'm going to do a little bit of inventory management. Drop um, <clears throat> these. Drop these. Assemble neutralizer, yes please. This one I need, this one I need. AWS, do I need that? Mm, maybe for killing golems if I'm going for that. So, um, generally what I do for this strategy is not kill golems because there's really no reason to and it's way more difficult uh, than just this. But you can also go for that part of uh, CDC on the other side. I would not recommend it. Um, we're gonna grab some Zion Light DM reactors because these are really good on flight uh, at this point in the game. Um, generally what I do is I take these and then I run them until I get VCR from Warlord. Let's see, anything else? I didn't get the... So uh, some other stuff that she has is um, advanced reaction control system and advanced phasing thingy. Um, so for extra dodge, that's also good on flight, but generally difficult to run this early in the game because of uh, energy concerns. Uh, oh, there's another medium storage unit. Let me go so quick. Ah, 
I'm going to not take the advanced target computer and quick this. AWS, sure. So bronze bore guns are extremely good weapons. Where was I taking this run again? I was gonna do some more guide stuff. Right. Um, don't think I'll take them. Ah, this is okay. We have the large battery, but this is strictly battery. Zion Biosa. Very useful. Uh, we're also let's see. We have a bit too much heat, so I'll take an experimental heat sink. Uh, my apologies to the people who aren't as interested in the inventory management part. Right. I guess I'll take them. Might as well. This seems okay. I shouldn't be doing all this uh, super precise management actually because it's gonna change in a minute again. Uh, right, we have the melee weapons equipped. We want these guys to die. Why do we want them to die? Um, there's a specific route, so this area um, Contrary to a lot of other places in the game, it's actually not randomly generated. So parts of this map are randomly generated. There's like these uh, little hallways here and nooks and crannies. And there's a, another couple in this area. But the main area, the layout, is actually very static. To the point that um, you can remember specific tiles in the layout. And if you walk a certain path, it's always completely safe. I'm going to show that in a second. Um, the problem is... Allies won't have that precision, they'll just waltz around everywhere, echoing enemies, and that's gonna result in us getting a bunch of enemies on our tail, which we don't want. So, since they've served their purpose, they can now go to this crap heap. Thank you for your service. Um, I don't think these guys drop very much stuff that's useful for me specifically. Um, Right, I think we have everything we need. This is always a bit difficult, the infantry management. Right, uh, first we're gonna check out cache number one. Uh, now there's enemies here, so like over there. I'm gonna dig here. So I'm light the M reactor. That's good. Off this, grab that. Uh, these little guys can drop hackware. Let's see if we can move them. Yeah, so there's makeshift hacking switch. Oh, oops. Make sure not to do that on this part. That part explodes. If you hit that, you're probably dead. Uh, or your run is ruined anyway. So we got one hackware. Um, I forgot what, where I was going to go with this run, but I'm going to go with the supposition that I'm probably doing fastest gun after this. Which is the next thing I might want to do a guide on. So then... I'll toss a board in for this, I think. I think that's okay. Yeah, if I'm doing a kiting strategy, I only want one of them. Um, okay. Sorry, I'm just talking to myself a bit here. Uh, why is this here? No idea. Okay, if you walk along this line here, you're perfectly safe from the um, two caches of enemies on both sides. You can also do this on a slow build. Um, except maybe for the next part. So you walk along here, here's one cache, nothing interesting. Uh, now you want to be very careful with your movement, because these tiles we see here are the edge of a cache of enemies. Um, this tile, this tile, and then this tile. And 
just for flight. I'm not sure why this works, but we can see them. I'm not sure if it's that the vision drawing isn't symmetric, so they can't see us, or it's just um, that the partial spot mechanic doesn't work on um, stationary enemies. But if you walk like this, at least on flight at this speed, I've never had a case where I was seen or detected by these guys. So you can just walk like this into here. And you can loot everything you need. This is some heavy armor. I would use this if I was going to do golems, but I don't think I feel like doing that. Um, more heavy armor. Another bio cell. Less damage, so we take that. Um, I'm fine with running reactors, so I'll just replace the damaged ones with non damaged ones. And that's everything we need. And, ah, should I be taking a. There was a weapon shield in here, actually. Um, maybe I should be taking that. Yeah, I'll take that. Um, I'll go back for it after I check out this area, I think, though. Right. Um, now here, these guys, if I don't have to deal with them, I don't want to. So we're gonna just say it's lucky that we got a partial spot and then move on. There's the exit. Now this area, you want to be careful. Um, this should really be a different guide, I guess, but um, there's golems here and other stuff. You don't want to deal with those. But what I do want to do is walk along the wall here without echoing anything and see what this item is. It's a skeleton box that's worse than useless. So we're not going to take that. Um, and that's basically it. Uh, yeah, so I'll, you know what, uh, there's some more infantry management I want to do. Um, I think I want to grab this and drop the AWS after all. But uh, yeah, th this is the gist of uh, how you do this. Um, I also, like this strategy synergizes heavily with um, killing exiles, both because you get the good weapons and, um, well, I guess it's an advanced strat for greedy players. So if you do the one, it makes sense to do the other. Um, and uh, because Braun also drops the assembled neutralizer, so that helps with the assembled you can find here. Um, yeah, and uh, there, there's some small minor things I could mention. So for example, one thing you can do is if you kill your allies and they have treads, uh, something I do sometimes is that I switch to the treads. And like, y there's no clock in this um, area. So you can take as long as you want and just switch around your build and in the end go back to flight. Um, so if you do kill your allies after finishing the imprinter you can use the stuff from them to fight golems because fighting golems on flight is not something i would recommend the imprinter is fine but golems i recommend switching your build temporarily because it's going to get completely obliterated it's doable though in terms of core and everything i've done it before um yeah and then the, as you can see we got scion meta field which is a whole game breaking levels of good if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment. Uh, if you want to see other guides, check out my channel. Um, and also, you can find me on the Roguelikes Discord in the Cockmine server. I'm usually around. If you ping me, uh, you can ask any question, and I'll try and help. I uh, hope you enjoyed. hope you learned something, and I'll uh, see you next time. Bye-bye.